Welcome to the video. We're going to be looking at how to install a VST plugin on your Windows machine so you can use it inside of Cubase. Now, this isn't going to be a guide for Mac users. Contrary to what a lot of people seem to believe or assume about me is that they think I have all the hardware and gear and stuff under the sun and I have Macs coming out my ears. I don't. <laughs> I just have a PC. Um, so if any of you are Mac users and you want to contribute to this video uh, by leaving as a you know the installation guide in the description down below uh, sorry the comments box down below then feel free to do so um, but I'm pretty sure the process is going to be very very similar on a Mac first of all you're going to need a plugin uh, so I've got baby audios parallel aggressor which was sent to me and usually when you buy or get sent stuff it comes in a zip file okay and a zip file is basically a container that shrinks down the overall size of a file so it's you know a lot quicker to download um, so what we need to do is extract our files out of the zip container to do this on windows you right click and you should have something that says extract extract here if you don't have something that says extract then download a third party piece of free software. I'll leave a link for this one I'm using. It's called Bandy Zip. And this will allow you to create your own zip files and extract contents from zip files. So let's extract the stuff. Okay, so we see here we have two folders and we have a PDF. I'm not on a Mac, so I don't need to worry about Mac. So I can just go ahead and delete that. Now inside of this PC folder, there is an installer. Most developers will provide you with an installer of some description. They will all look and act slightly differently, but they all do the same thing. And that is allow you to install your plugins to your desired locations. So I'm going to run the installer like so. I'll have a pop up asking me if I'd like to run it. It will be a black screen for you guys, but just click yes. And now here we'll be greeted with the EULA known as an end user license agreement. This is to tell you what your usage rights are with the plugin. For mixing plugins, people, there's not, not much point reading these, but when it comes to actual sample libraries, always read the end user license agreement so you'd know your rights and that you are not accidentally illegally doing things with their samples that you shouldn't be doing because you're not aware of them because you haven't read the EULA because you can get in a lot of trouble for it so always make sure you read these click next usually you'll find that you get greeted with uh, a pop-up saying where would you like to install any documentation if you get that install it anywhere you like it doesn't really matter about the documentation but here we've gone straight to um, the window that's asking us where we'd like to install our 32 bit versions of this plugin. Now, just to clarify, on PC, you will have two folders called Program Files and Program Files x86. Assuming that you have a 64 bit version of Windows installed, you'll have two folders. Program Files is for 64 bit stuff, Program Files x86 is for 32 bit stuff, okay? And you'll see here on the installer, it's automatically selected the program files x86 folder. And it's also looking to put the plugins inside of a folder called VST plugins, which is the default location 99.9% .9 of all the installers will use when installing your plugins. I'm going to leave that as it is because that's fine with me. You can add, you know, you can make a different folder, install your plugins to that folder on a different hard drive. But you then need to make sure that when you load Cubase, you tell Cubase where you've installed those plugins. Because if you don't, it will just shrug its shoulders at you and go, well, I don't know where you put it. Um, you need to make it aware of where things are. So I'm going to click Next. And now it's asking me where I'd like to install the 64-bit versions of the plugin. And again, this is going to be in C Program Files VST plugins, which I'm happy with because that's another default location. So once we've clicked next twice, you'll see that we have a two tabs here with some checkboxes we can activate. We have 32 bit plugins and we have 64 bit plugins. And in each of these, there's a VST2, VST3 and an AAX plugin, which is a Pro Tools format. Now, because I'm on a 64 bit version of Windows using a 64 bit version of Cubase, which only supports 64 bit plugins, there's no need for me to be using 32 bit anything. OK, so I can uncheck all of those 32 bit plugins. Now, the only thing I want to uncheck on the 64 bit 
is AXX because I don't use Pro Tools. Now, VST2, if you're using things like OBS and video editing software, those all use VST2 plugins. So it's always a good idea to install a VST2 version as well. If the plugin also comes with a version that's VST3, even better if you're using Cubase because it means it's more accurate when it's using the plugin, doing all the, you know, the calculations for it. So it's always good to install both. Now you might find with some vendors, when you open up the extracted folder, there's no installer and there's just what's known as the DLL file, which is the VST plugin format, or you might have an AAX plugin shell. And what you would need to do with them is just manually copy and paste them to the, you know, the locations. So for um, VST, obviously I'd just copy and paste it into my VST plugins folder, depending on if it's 32 bit or 64 bit, it will usually say anyway on the uh, DLL file. So now this is installed. All we need to do is open up Cubase. So I'm going to open up Cubase, go to our studio plugin manager, and then rescan the directory. Now for me, it's not going to say there's a new plugin because I already had it installed. It'll just go zero of zero. If this is the first time you've installed the plugin that you're installing, it'll, it should pop up and say one new plugin found or however many plugins found that you've just installed. And if that's showing up, then, you know, winner, everything's working. If you find after you've actually scanned everything and it's not showing up and nothing new has been found, then you need to make sure that you haven't spammed the next button when installing a plugin and the plugin hasn't installed to its own folder. Sometimes you might find with some companies when the plugins get installed, they create a folder in your program files or program files x86. For example, let's say baby audio just created a baby audio folder. And what you might find is sometimes the installers chuck the DLL files into these folders. So what you'd need to do is one of two things. Either take the DLL file and move it to your VST plugin folder or in Cubase, click on the cog icon and you'll see that you have the VST2 plugin path settings. And this allows us to tell Cubase what folders to scan on our computer that may contain any plugins. So I can click the plus sign here and then I'd just simply select the baby audio folder if you know that was the case of what I was saying previously. And then hit rescan and then it should find all the plugins in there. And it's as simple as that. Now, if your plugins are not showing up in the list, let me just provide you with an example here. So on the right here, you have your plugins list, okay? And I've created my own custom plugin list of all the plugins that I like to use and organize them into their own folders. Now, if you find that, you know, you scan the plugin and it's found it, but then when you go to your inserts, it's not showing up, if you've made a custom list, you need to make sure that you've actually added it into the list afterwards. So if I go back to VST Plugin Manager, type in Parallel Aggressor. I need to make sure I grab this and copy it over into whatever folder I want it to be in. And now it will show up in my plugins list like so. If you find that no plugins are showing here, it looks a bit like, I don't know, looks a bit like that. It's probably because you might have accidentally removed everything in the plugins list. I mean, it's easy to do. You can just select all these and accidentally press delete and it gets rid of them all. And then when you go to your inserts, yeah, it's not going to not gonna show anything. So you need to add your plugins back in by just grabbing the ones you want to use and just chucking them in like so. Or you can just go to the down arrow and go to default and it'll automatically add all the plugins in order of vendor or what's known as vendor, which is company name. And anytime you add any new plugins, um, it'll automatically just chuck them into the folders for you because you're using the default setting. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now, if you're using something like Contact, then the installation process for that is a little bit different because it uses something called Native Access, which I've done a video on which allows you to download all your products, register the serials, 
install any plugins and sample libraries through native access. But the process is very, very much the same as what we've done here. It's just a different type of installation software. The only real difference with it is that if you're installing things like sample libraries, there's an extra step because Contact will install the software, which will be in the VST plugins folder. But then when it installs the sample content, it will probably ask you for a location to designate for that. So there we go. Hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you have any issues or if you're using a version of Cubase that isn't artist or pro and you're on something like Cubase LE or Cubase, uh, what's it, Essentials or something like that, you might find that there are limitations to those pieces of software with what you can install and or how much you can use or something. Um, I wouldn't be able to provide you the answers for it because I don't own them. Just because I do Cubase videos doesn't mean I know everything about every version of Cubase. Um, so you might have to check with Steinberg or go onto the Steinberg forum and ask people on there. So hopefully you found this useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.